Well, is it Robert or is it Patrick? Either one works. And you, you changed your name? I did. Why did you change your name? Um, I got symbolically married to someone and uh, she changed her name as well. Um, but there's a lot of reasons. There's a guy from New Orleans who probably wants to, he'd like to see me dead, for sure. So he, he believes I stole $90,000. But you didn't? Well, <laughs> it's complicated. Yeah. Um, he put it in my bank and it was supposed to buy greenhouses. Um, but uh, our relationship fell apart. And um, I saw the writing on the wall, so uh, I just uh, left the group. I left our. I was trying to start a, a pot farm in Oregon with him. I bought 15 acres. You, you didn't return his money, though? No, no, no. He, um, I stopped. I, for a year, I was developing this property for him for, for free. My labor was free, and he was randomly sending amounts to my Whitney Bank in New Orleans. I think he was depositing cash, like, 1,262, 2,091, 152. He has a questionable business um, in New Orleans in the French Quarter. <coughs> uh, he has a really ugly brick house there. Um, ground floor, on the, you know, on the ground, it's unusual. And he, he leases, or he rents to uh, people having bachelor parties, and he doesn't care. Hookers, drugs, as long as the cops don't get called. But it's not legal. Um, he's not supposed to be doing that um, so in the French let, let, let's, let's talk about you. Sorry, okay, yeah. So, so <laughs> right. you, you are autistic, right? Uh, well, you can say that. I don't, I, don't like, I don't like that term, I'm an autist. I, I'm not a person with autism. I have, I'm an autist. Hmm. And how does that impact your life? How does it, how does it affect you? How does it, it mostly um, relationships and uh, employment. You have a hard time keeping a job? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had like, I don't know, 30, 40 jobs in my life. I just got fired from a senator because of YouTube. Uh, one of my YouTubes. The thumbnail on it, they saw the thumbnail. It was about a story. I previously, I was working before the cemetery at a, a two funeral homes. And uh, I, I did something that was bad with my first uh, removal. What'd you do? I took a photo with the body. And you put it on YouTube? I did, and it's still <laughs> up. Um, so I'm sure, in it, the title of it is uh, My First Dead Body, Apologies. So I'm sure YouTube, some eyes were on it, you know? Um, and the face is scrubbed out, so. Yeah, but still. And on top of where the, the face used to be, where it's just white void, I put $100. And uh, that offended a lot of people. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, um, so she fired me. I was like, did you watch the video? She's like, no. I said, like, you really should watch the video. You don't need to watch the video. Oh, you do, you do, you do. No, you, you do. don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but I mean, get some hair for doctor. You, you, said, you don't go taking pictures of dead bodies and putting them on YouTube, even if you scrub out the face. It's up. I don't know. I mean, I hope YouTube doesn't take my channel down, but somebody had to have looked at it. Hmm. I, I mean. Are, are, you, are you misunderstood by most people? Oh, yeah, everybody. Yeah, fucking everyone. Everyone. And is that because of the autism or the autism? Uh, you can say autism, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's a type of brain, but I just don't like, when you refer to a person, I don't like to, to, to say that they have autism because it's a brain difference. It's not something that you have, it's something that you are. Mm -hmm. Like, you have... But there are also positive aspects to being Oh, autistic. fuck, I wouldn't want to be typical. No. <laughs> it's, autism is one in 30, and it's, we have a different type of brain. Uh, it's a genetic and epigenetic, um, but... Yeah, I wouldn't want to be anyone but me. No, you know, I would like if I had a typical brain, I wouldn't be me. So it's like <laughs> you're you're happy as you are. Yeah, 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 Mr. Rogers, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your your childhood. My childhood. You grew up where? I I grew up in Central Pennsylvania. I went to three different high schools, two different junior highs, and a Catholic day school. I don't remember my parents ever being together. They were divorced before I, my memories were really being formed. But uh, it was really, uh, you know, I asked my mom recently because uh, how, what my temperament was. Because I also have, what's, you know, I'm just gonna say it right now, I hope we get to, ex I get to do a little explanation, but personality disorder. Um, which one? <laughs> we'll talk about that. Okay, which one? 
antisocial, narcissistic, histrionic, borderline, uh, schizoid, schizotypical, avoidant, dependent, Trickle the boxes. and paranoid. Yeah, it's uh, I've shifted all through those. I've been all, all, all. And you were you think you were born this way, or this because of some oh, no. traumatic? <laughs> no, I wasn't. No, I was born an autist. I I uh, developed uh, severe personality disorder. What what went on in your childhood? Did my my father? Uh, um, he I believe has uh, had had all, he recently died. And uh, it was it was a, a great relief to me that he died. Um, I hadn't hadn't spoken to him for 15 years, and he was triangulating with my sister, and my sister stopped speaking to me. My sister was like, "Oh, it's because you're mean to your mom or something." Our mom, and uh, it, that was bullshit. It was uh, it was it was Wayne, my father, um, wedging, trying to continue to punish me. Um, so he, uh, my father, uh, I believe was an autist and without without question would classify as antisocial personality disorder severe and uh, he was abused as a child his 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 mother my grandmother um, she definitely had antisocial personality disorder also autist um, she chained him up to the crib whenever she, she never wanted to have kids and uh, and uh, but my grandfather convinced her to, you know, have babies, and they had two, and they're both fucked up. Um, my aunt, also autist, and severe personality disorder. You know, my aunt choked the family dog, killed it. Yeah, m m my father. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, they're they're, they're sadists. You know, I mean, that's why. What is antisocial? Antisocial is a person with personality disorder who. Uh, um, is a shot who is shot in Freud, you know, and it's not good. And my father tried to make me antisocial, and I just didn't. It didn't. It didn't stick. Um, uh, he he got in, he started getting in trouble like all antisocial people will in high school, and his he had an argument with his father, and his my you know his father was like. I, you know, if you don't straighten up, I'm gonna send you to the military. This was during Vietnam, you know, at the height of Vietnam. And my father's like, fuck you, I'll go, to, I'll, I'll go right now. So my grandfather took him down to the recruiter office when he was 17, signed him away, and uh, my father wanted to be a badass. I mean, he wasn't badass. Uh, he's, he became a Green Beret, Special Forces, um, did, did psych ops. He was a terrorist, he was a terrorist for the US government. and. Uh, uh, you know, the training that he got, he served three tours, got shot twice in the leg, each leg. Machine gun came up, brrr, went through the, didn't hit one bone. How do you do that? How do you get shot in both legs? No, fuck. And grenade shrapnel. Um, I believe he was a POW. No, he didn't talk about that that much. Um, but came back and was, I mean, he was fucked up going in and, and way fucked up when he came out. Uh, you know, he did horrible things and saw horrible things. And, uh, you know, he told me when they were training that they would they, like, to desensitize, they'd take chickens and <laughs> have them bite the neck to kill the chicken, you know? Uh, and he tried to get me to enjoy inflicting pain on animals. And uh, it didn't work. <laughs> Good, because if it would have worked, you motherfuckers would be in trouble. How would you, uh, how would you describe your childhood in general? Confusing, very confusing. I mean, m my father and my mother were absolute angels and, and the best, you know, you would never want any parents other than them. And then, devils, back and forth. Mm. And, uh, and uh, it's, I think that's probably what causes a lot of people to develop splitting. You know what splitting is? Mm -hmm. uh, you, can't, you can't understand. Well, you're you're very interesting for an autist who, because typically people with autism are they have a difficult time speaking or communicating or being around people. You you seem like a great speaker. You're very comfortable speaking in front of them. Sometimes. I, 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 you know, 10 years ago, I saw Trent Reznor walking up the Hollywood Hills with my Christian girlfriend, 
And I was like, that's Trent Reznor. And she's like, who's Trent Reznor? She was making the music. I was like, you, how do you not? <laughs> okay, so Trent Reznor, I was a big fan, but um, you know, I didn't really listen to too much of the lyrics. Some of it, you know, I was more into the, just the music, so, but I've listened to his out. It's like, I should know every word. Um, but I saw him coming up, and I, I saw him in, Key, in, in New Orleans, too. <laughs> I, used, I was working in a gallery doing framings in his Nothing Studios, was uh, just one block. And he was uh, going to open his door. He was holding these packages that looked really expensive. And I was going to op open the door for him, be like, hey, do you need a hand? And then he looked at me, and he's like, oh, fuck, fan. And I was like, OK. And I just kept walking. <laughs> I ignored him, and he dropped a package. <laughs> anyway, I saw him uh, like several years later at the Hollywood Hills, and I just wanted to say hello. And you know, my girlfriend didn't know who, who, who he was. <laughs> She's like, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> and I'll just head down, head down. Oh, you, 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 you explained <laughs> to me before we started that you have a heart, what is it called? It's called selective mutism. So you'll, you'll, you'll be unable to speak. Yeah, celebrities, I mean, if with you, like, it was horrible in high school. Like, if I liked a girl, I, could, I couldn't go up to them, I couldn't, you know. The anxiety gets too much? Yeah, and I say high school, it's like, it's still like this, but uh, the online dating things, which the girl that changed her name with me, um, I met, I, I, I was on OkCupid for three hours, and then I was with her for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and we, we texted back and forth. I did like, I, I transferred it all into an app that I could count the words, and it was, our text in the first month was the amount of a novel. <laughs> she has autism too, and, and blab her mouth. Um, what was your question? No, that you, you, well, you, were, you were talking about your selective. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I have a relationship with you already, mm -hmm. right? We spoke on the phone. We spoke on the phone for 35 minutes. That was 35 minutes? No, the first one was five, the second one was 10, and then there was 20. But no, no, I'm sorry, 45 minutes. Okay, so, wait, we spoke so, before. Yeah, yeah. And we exchanged just, just, texts. Just to make sure I'm interested in interviewing you. And then you you hopped in your car and drove here from Pennsylvania. Straight, yeah. I was like, I'm fired. How, how many days did that take you? I, uh, it was three. three. I could have I could have I could have done the interview yesterday. So it was, uh, you know, drive, 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 drive. I didn't get hotels or anything. Go in the back, nap. You know, if I get if every time I like, uh, okay, nap. Drive, 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 drive. How, how old are you now? Forty eight. Forty eight. And your life has been, you have kids? No kids. No kids. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm most thankful for, actually. I would love to have a kid. I would adopt, you know. But uh, making a kid, I mean, I feel bad for you. You have two daughters? I do. Yeah, I, I feel horrible for you. It's, uh, <laughs> anyone who has a kid. Yeah, so bad. Why is that? I don't know if you noticed, but it's getting fucking hot outside. <laughs> it's getting really, really, really really fucking hot. I saw the Joshua trees coming here. I don't know, I'm not an expert in, in Joshua trees or anything, but I looked at them and they all looked sad. I saw them 10 years ago and coming this way, I was like, oh man, they look like they just got baked. And uh, shit is falling apart and it's gonna fall apart really, really fast if something radical doesn't. I'm, I'm running for president. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that. I want to mention another thing too. I want to give some thanks out to two YouTubers. Is that okay? <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be where I am right now without two YouTubers. I don't agree with everything that they say, but uh, extremely educational. Dr. Romney and uh, Professor Sam Beckman. Okay, you get the plug out. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ask for it. But. So, so, I mean, how do you spend your time now? Jobless? Oh, man, jobless. Um, well, when I have a job, it's, it's nice. How do you support yourself, typically? Um, trying to hang on to a job? Oh, man, how do I try to support myself? With, with, with all these personality disorders, it's got, your life's got to be brutal. It is, yeah, it's very, very challenging. If, if I wasn't blessed with my aptitude, I wouldn't be here, I'd be dead. Like, I, definitely, without a question. So, you, you seem to be, like, over the phone, I was impressed with your knowledge of personality disorders and I hate that term. What, I, I really what, like it. What term do you prefer? I just made it last night. I put it on your pain. It's uh, ICPTSD. <laughs> That's what personality disorder is. All these psychologists are all fucked up. 
It's I C P T S D. It's a, a individuation complex post traumatic stress disorder. So, and um, you can, it happens from zero to four years old, whenever you're individuating. And if that gets fucked up because you have a dead mother, dead mother, um, an abusive parent. Doesn't have to be abusive, you know? I mean, it, uh, oh, I mean, that's just an example of. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, to get as fucked up as I am, you have to have, yeah, some major, major, major abuse. But if you have, like, that's why I wanted to know about my temperament. So I asked my mom, and she's like, you are an easy to please baby. And she's like, has four of these uh, um, photo albums. And uh, she's like, look, you're happy in all the pictures. Sure, yeah, Instagram from 1978. Sure, yeah, I had a great, you know. Um, so if you have like a, a difficult temperament, you need extra attention. And it, you're, you know, it, it's a lot of work to, to raise a, a child right. And it's a term called good enough mother, right? So if you're a good enough mother, you can individuate. You become a separate entity from your mother. You, you create these boundaries and you respect other people's boundaries. If that doesn't happen from zero to four, you're gonna be fucked up. You're gonna have a negative effect, anacostia, dissociality, disinhibition, detachment, emotional dysregulation, cognitive distortions, and distorted boundaries. And that's what personality disorder is. It's a horrible fucking name. It needs to stop being used. It's I-C-P-T-S-D, and it can be managed. I'm, gonna, I'm a perfect example. I should be Jeff, I, I, I should make Jeffrey Dahmer look like a piece of, like, amateur, amateur. He might be a little bit better looking than me, but fucking amateur. How, how have you, <laughs> how have you managed your, um, whatever the term is that you came up with? ICPTSD. ICPTSD. I see. It's it's really it's CPTSD with an I, and it's like I was like I see I see PTSD. Um, how have I managed? Art, first and foremost, and then um, it, it, mostly. Painting, video, I did videos, I did dogma videos uh, back in high school with a big VHS camera with my friends. I started a cult. They didn't know, but. <laughs> um, every good ICPTSD or starts a cult. Um, <clears throat> I lost you. What was your question? <laughs> no, how, how have you managed it? Oh, oh, art. Art, and that's what, like, uh, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer is going out and he ate people? I don't know. He killed, like, they do that to master their trauma. So they're, you know, people that, I, you know, like Jake, right? He was Corey, the... Corey interviewed? Yeah, he, yeah. He, he committed, he, he OD'd or died? He OD'd in, in January. Yeah. Um, so he was raped by his father, right. and it was horrible. Um, oh, wait. How did he master it? It must have been. No. I'm sorry. Wrong. Wrong person. <laughs> he, may have, he may have mastered it, given that he's... Yeah, dead. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, no, he went trans. That's how he made... I, I'm sorry. I watched a lot of your your your, your interviews, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, they're starting to blend me. Yeah, he was but, trans at one point, and then he came... Yeah, so that's how he mastered it. Um, he transitioned. Yeah, so, and, like, things, like, when I say art, you know, paintings, writing, definitely. I had a blog, and I would work things out, writing, and that's how I mastered it, but... A constructive way instead of a, a, a destructive way. Um, uh, like, for instance, I'll give you an example. <laughs> Another YouTube that's up, still up. Uh, I, I'm shocked. Um, my cult, when, when I was in high school, um, I lived out in the country and there was a dead deer there. Okay, now my dad tried to get me to enjoy inflicting pain on animals because his biggest fear was that I was going to be a pussy. Um, not pussy. <laughs> uh, so, but I didn't want to do it. I mean, I have a, a hunting story where he told me, just shoot the deer through the heart. No other shot is, is good. And this deer walked right in front of me. And I, you know, I had never been out in the woods quiet and let a deer walk in front of me. So I was like, this is really wild. You know, I don't know fuck. It was just the experience of the deer walk, let alone shooting it. And then, he, you know, he's this green ray. He has all this high tech night scopes and, you know, I'm like a, a soldier out there getting, getting my deer enemy. And uh, the deer walked in front of me, and he's like, why didn't you take the shot? And I was like, I didn't have a shot through the heart. He said, only take a shot through the heart. And he said, knucklehead, you could have shot it in the face. Um, so I was like, fuck. And then he thought I just didn't have the balls to kill a deer, which I, 
I, I can kill a deer um, and eat a deer and skin a deer. Fuck, <laughs> it's no problem. It's a, so, but that was traumatic because I was like, I was following orders. I was following the fucking orders to the T and you think I'm a knucklehead. So um, I didn't realize that I was mastering this trauma. I didn't even realize that it was trauma at the time. But five years later, I have this video camera, I have a cult, and I have this dead deer. And I'm like, let's do something. So we do like Lord of Flies. It's really bad. <laughs> there's, no, there's no plot. It's just us mutilating a dead deer. So it's like, what the fuck is this, right? Because all in, like, not all antisocial, but like a lot of the antisocial people have a history of torturing animals to get that sadistic, you know, because they were tortured. So it's like, they're gonna have the same environment, the same conditions. Were you tortured as a kid? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I was tortured in Orange County Jail. I was tortured in Allegheny County Jail. I've been tortured fucking too much. <laughs> tortured in what ways? Uh, so I'll start, my father. Now I was thinking about this going in, driving here, and um, I, have, I have this scar. It's, it, and I got it from when I was zero to four. I never understood it, you know? But I heard the stories. And the story about the scar is that I was a toddler walking around and I bumped my dad's motorcycle exhaust pipe and burned it, burned my hand. And this is also where I did a lot of self-harm. It's like right in my face, I cut over that scar. And then later I was trying to quit smoking cigarettes. I put a cigarette out beside that scar. Didn't even connect dots. And I'm like, this fucking shit, man. <laughs> I, I figured out, I don't have the memory of it, but it wasn't me burning my hand on an exhaust pipe. My father had me jumping off of roofs into his hands, you know, like tall roofs, repelling, <laughs> holding chainsaws. I have this picture. I'm like this tall, holding the, holding the chainsaw. What the fuck? Why? Uh, you know. Um, but no, he was he was afraid. My mother has, if she were going to be classified as anything, dependent personality disorder, and um, they have these really distorted boundaries too, and. Uh, my father was afraid. My father cheated on her whenever I was zero to four with the next door neighbor. He had a war with his other neighbor. His other neighbor built a spike fence. I had a fucking, same thing happened to me in West Homestead, Pennsylvania. My neighbor put up a spike fence. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So his neighbor put up a spike fence and there was some argument. I, don't, I think my dad built a garage that he didn't like. Or so. I don't know what the fucking argument was about. I don't have memories of this. This is all stories, but I know that I, you know, the picture books are really nice because you can go back and like put the pieces together and be like, ah, figure out what the fuck happened before. Um, so his neighbor threw paint on his house, a gallon of paint on his house, and he was fucking the neighbor who I was playing with their daughters, and their daughters dressed me up in girls' clothes, and I was like playing with dolls, and it didn't bother me, you know, I was like having fun, but that blew my mom, my father's brain, you know, he's like fag, fuck, why am I a fag? Because I got the genetics of my pussy mother, you know, she's just oh, wouldn't hurt a f hurt, wouldn't hurt a fly, you know. I don't want to take the fly off. That kind of not really, but you're not gay. Uh, or are you? I'm inexperienced by. <laughs> I mean, not inexperienced, but sh small experience and uh, non-binary. Um, so I had you know some some experimentation in high school, very little, and then after my first divorce in Albuquerque. I would go in the bars and, and couldn't talk to anybody in the bars that I was attracted to. So I like, became friends with the bouncer. <laughs> and the bouncer's like, come on, man. Come on with me, I'll suck your dick. And I was like, oh man, I really want, I really want a blowjob. I just don't, you know. So I went home with him and was nervous. And he, you know, I pulled my pants down, I got a boner. I was like, oh, okay, this is working. And he started sucking my dick. I was like, feels just as good. No, it feels better actually. It's like, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. <laughs> And then in the middle of it, you know, I close my eyes and I feel his whiskers brush up against my, my crotch area, and I just freak out, jump up, pants on, boom, out the door, never to the bar again. Um, but yeah, what, this was a, the neighbor. So he was fucking the neighbor. She has, she's uh, antisocial too. And my father said, your mother just didn't have what I needed. Laura, the next door neighbor, had what I needed. And, uh, Where, where do we go? Where do we go? Know. <laughs> it's a convoluted little path we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to keep me on track here. Are, are, are <laughs> mo most of your family dealing with some form of 
personality I issue? Yeah. yeah. Is most of the world, do you think? Yes. Well, it depends. This is a hot place. This place, LA fucking. Once this interview's over, I'm gone. I'm like, getting in my car, I'm kind of like, I, uh, this place scares me. I mean, I'm poor, so <laughs> it's like, got a shitty hotel. I just wanted, I was like, I looked at all the hotels, I was like, okay, I'll try to get around rush hour. I got up real early, kind of got in the middle of rush hour, and I just wanted a bathtub so I could soak, because I was sore. And this $90 hotel <laughs> that has a bathtub, you can't fill it up. So, so, so <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm lost again. God damn it. I was just asking if most of the world. Oh, yeah, is. especially in LA. Anywhere there's cameras, anywhere there's cameras, you're going to have people with uh, very, very weak egos that, that appear like egotistical. But they, they either have a weak ego or no ego. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Politicians, surgeons, CEOs. People that like the limelight. Uh, yeah, need. I don't think it's like. You know, it's like they need it. It's their food. If they don't get that, or if they get hooked on it, and then they then there's no more. Then it's like they have this existential crisis because they depend on it. To, they don't have a self. They need the external world for them to have themselves. And, and like, um. <laughs> I was on a, I was on a plane with a coming back from east part of the country and uh, there was a celebrity sitting a couple of rows ahead of me that we all know a very famous celebrity sitting on the aisle and every single passenger that came on the plane had to tell him that they loved this movie that he was in <laughs> and he's their favorite actor and then just like got got attention from every single passenger and he soaked it all in he loved it he was, he was so gracious with every single person, every passenger on the plane. It was, it was amazing to watch. It, it's sad. And he, he clearly just loved it. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really sad. I feel bad for him. No, I mean, it's, it, he's lucky that he found the career that, that, yeah, that works. It's a patch. There's a whole... Well, I mean, everything we do is a patch, isn't it? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you can become healthy. I mean, there, maybe <laughs> there are some healthy ones among us that are just doing things. That it's rare. Yeah, it's rare. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be really authentic. And well, most of us are struggling with what we went through in childhood. It might be my father, like his determination to, to get to me have balls, because you need gigantic fucking balls to be authentic. Like, to not care what anyone thinks about you, just what you think about yourself. Yeah. Um, you, to be on social media, you have to have that. I am a horrible failure on social media. I think no, if you're concerned about what other people think of you, you're, you'll crumble. I'm not concerned. But like nobody will follow me. I committed a Facebook suicide yesterday. I was like, <laughs> what I, is that? It, I I kept I had put a lot of work into Facebook, um, and had a love hate relationship with it, and had forty one followers. I'm like, what the fuck? I go to all these places, get engagement, contact. You know, I, you know, they'll 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 volley back and forth with me on their site. Nobody comes to mine and drops a comment. They go to my site, I think, and be like, eeks, weirdo, and then gone are you a weirdo um yeah i'm not on the, like there's a bell curve of like what's normal and what's not normal yeah <laughs> <laughs> in your video that you sent me when you were when you first contacted me i think you said you're a weirdo right? i am yeah it was a horrible video i was like when you called me i was like what is this for fucking real and then i heard your voice and i'm like my my, my paranoid brain's like cgi or computer generated it's like is somebody trying to scam me to get me to fucking you know pop out and be like, oh, a famous person wants to talk to me and I'll drive across the country. And, you know, I get here and then I find out I was, I was catfished and I'm fucking, I don't have any money. <laughs> was that a thought of yours? Yes. As you were coming out? There? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it wasn't for real? Yeah. Oh well, I, I was, I had suspicions about you whenever, like, I was texting you, right? And, and my cousin, my, my last insignificant other, she does this. Like, she does, she'll, we'll be texting, <laughs> yeah. you know, you get the blue, it's, it's red. Brother. And then you went green. I was like, oh, fuck. You know, she's done that to me like 10 times, and you did it to me. Or I don't know, it could have been an accident. I did what? Whenever you had read your red receipts on for your text? Uh, it's I an iPhone. Think, okay. I don't think I have it on. Well, you did. And then something happened. You either turned, because you see, so you could have turned your phone off. So I didn't know. You could have turned your phone off. It's red receipts. I, I turned my phone off a lot. 
I believe you. Yeah, I'm assuming have, you have two phones, right? Phone right now. What? I, I, I have so many iPhones, I can't tell you. <laughs> but the, but the, the main one is, is off most of the time. Is that the one that I? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's off. If it's off, you don't get the blue message. You get the green. It wasn't delivered, right? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't pay attention to that. Well, and that's why I didn't like, and I was like, Patrick, you know, he's just turned his phone off. The one thing that you told me whenever we talked, you're like, my phone is crazy. It goes, talk fast. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I understand you're. Yeah, I don't have long, I don't have time for a half hour conversation. I understand, I understand. Yeah. And I was like, please, please, please interview. You'll like it. I promise. Okay. Well, you, 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 you made a good impression over the phone. You're very articulate, very educated. I, I have a coloring. Is, is, it, is it difficult for you to get by in the world being who you are? It's super. Nobody believes me. There's. People think you're crazy. There's one person I know for sure that believes that I'm here right now talking to you. Hey, what? <laughs> Everybody else thinks I'm hallucinating or my mom just called me a wackadoo. She's like, I saw some of your YouTubes. You're a wackadoo. I'm like, fuck you, Jesus Christ. That's like, that's like the problem that all autists have. It's like, you know, people can tell. You might be normal and articulate and like smart, but you spend enough time around an autist and you, you like, there's something off about this person. And that, that something off, that's the bias that fucks us all up. So what, what makes you different than most people who have autism? I would say, I don't. Because you're very, you know, you're very outgoing. I don't want to. You're an extrovert. I don't want to sound like a narcissist or anything, but I think it's my intelligence, and I think it's really hard. But a lot of autistic people are highly intelligent. I don't think so. I think I think the intelligence distribution on autists is exactly the same as normal people or typical people. It's just there's a selection bias because the autists that are super intelligent that you you know Elon Musk. Oh. Mm, mm. He came on Saturday Night Live, that motherfucker. Saturday Night Live. I have Asperger's. Yeah, you're an Asperger, all right, Elon. No, is, is it difficult for you to just navigate life? Yeah. With, with yeah. what you're. Yeah, it's like. <sighs> dealing with? When I'm having a conversation with someone. I watched this dark-skinned guy from uh, Ohio, skateboarder, autist, right? And he's like, I got no filter. People think I'm rude. What's in my mind, if it's in there, I gotta get it out. And then, you know, that's like, I, I, knew, I, I knew exactly what he's talking about. You can't just keep your mouth shut. Because, uh, you know, it depends. Like, if it's, like with you. <laughs> I value this interview so much. I was very, 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 very focused on not scaring you or making you're, just, you're a little scary. Yeah, yeah. I was working at a liquor store. You know, I did the first week. I did 80, 60, 65 thousand dollars. It was like an insane amount of liquor I sold in Pennsylvania. It was during a holiday, and uh, this one customer comes up to me. You know, and I'm just like, she's talking, and she's like, I can see you being a serial killer. They're like out of the blue. I'm like, I didn't do anything, you know. It was just, I'm nice. I'm smiling. I'm like, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, I remember. It's I was telling her about um, my new job because at that time it wasn't full time. The, the funeral home, I was getting a hundred dollars per coffin, per per removal, and you know that's you're picking up dead people from the morgue. You're picking up dead people from nursing homes. Oh my God, what a horror show that is, and uh, from people's homes. And it's, it's extremely, all the people are traumatized, like boom, at the height of the trauma. And you're there to come and take their loved one away and make money doing it. So they don't like you at all. <laughs> um, somebody's gotta do it, right? 100 bucks, man. Most money ever made, ever. What did you wanna do with your life? Hmm. Or what do you wanna do with your life? Uh, president, you know, I, no, I take that back. I don't wanna be president. Uh, I just, it, I feel an obligation to at least be like, please vote for me, because Donald yeah, Trump and Joe Biden and all the other fucking people. Are you, are you out of touch with reality a little bit? No, I don't think so. No. no. I mean, that's one of the, that's one of the, the, the features that you have to, you have to overcome, which would be a, 
cognitive distortions. Cognitive distortions, yeah, I, I've gone psychotic. So I know what being psych, I've gone psychotic. And, and drugs are not part of your life, or they are? Uh, yeah, they have been. It's, it's been a coping mechanism in the bad ones. Um, that would be crystal meth? No, no, no. I only did crystal meth, I think, three times. And it was always somebody, it was a circumstance, somebody gave it to me. What is your drug? Uh, cannabis, for sure. Um, that's the one that's, that's, I got a really strong relationship with and, and love it, but you know, there are negative effects to it. Uh, mostly, you know, if you consume it through smoke. But um, alcohol is the worst one, is, is by it hard, far. Is it hard to be uh, autistic and have, you know, drug use? Hmm. Are you using drugs while you're an autist? I don't, I don't think it's any different than, than a typical person. Uh, I think actually being an autist might have drawn me to particular types of drugs. Because there's, I have sensory, sensory sensitivities. Whenever we're born, our brains are overconnected. And uh, there's a theory that our, there's a group of neurons in the prefrontal cortex, cortex called mirror neurons. And they light up depending on what other people are doing. So if you're, if you're like happy, then my, my mirror neurons will, will be like just pulsing happy, 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 happy. And that's how I can have empathy with you. Well, Apparently, autists don't have the same complex network that typical people have with involving, we do have some, but not as complex, not as developed. We have uh, um, other strengths. We're called systemizers, you're called empathizers, but it's not that you can't systemize and that we can't empathize, it's just that our brains are naturally better at that. And um, so I have sensory sensitivities and they're, they're weird, like um, some of them make sense, like lights, bright lights. Uh, even before I knew, I was just diagnosed four years ago. Um, as a kid, I would design my room to have these really nice lights, and I just thought I was artsy. But looking back, I'm like, no, dude, you were, you were, <laughs> you were, you were bringing down the, 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 the sensory inputs to relax and to decompress and colored greens. Undercooked collard greens, person chewing them beside me, makes my brain fucking explode. I want to kill them. I got to get away from the crunch of the collard greens. Um, cold water, this wasn't all throughout my life. It happened after I had some difficulties in the Twin Cities when I was painting. Nobody was buying my painting, so I had to work for this uh, landscaping company, and it was a heat wave, and I was sleeping in a Walmart parking lot, getting eaten by mosquitoes, had to have my windows down. It was just fucking awful but I was taking baths in the lakes there and the lakes were it was so it was hot the lakes were ice cold and you'd think it would be like nice but I had to get clean because I was working 12 hours a day breathing two stroke fumes sweating my balls off ready to die um, and then hopping into these ice cold lakes to, to wash off and after that anytime cold water would hit me it was like electricity going down my butt. but the sensory sensitive the sensory sensory issues is uh, their sensory seeking behavior, right? I don't think it's as commonly known. Everyone knows about the meltdown. Ah, ah, you know, no, I, I, you know, pretty patterns, uh, kaleidoscopes. It's just you know I'm drawn to it, you know, and I think you know, that's why you'll find a lot of artists. I think in the visual arts, actually all the arts. Um, I think there's a disproportionate amount of autists in, in the arts. What, sure. what are the upsides of being autistic? The systemizing brain, you know, I think it's, I think, I think, I think we have a better grasp of reality, typically than the, than the, than the average, the typical person, because of it. because you're you're based on these emotions and understanding other people, and other people are all fucked up, you know. We understand more, we more easily understand like physics, <laughs> and uh, you know, if you wanted to design an electric car and rocket ships. That's an asset, <laughs> or Facebook. That's an asset. But if you if you want to excel on Facebook as a creator, then it's a detriment. <laughs> so it just depends. You know, there's fields where it's it's a benefit, and it's just you know, it's called diversity, neurodiversity, neurodiversity, and it makes for a healthy organism. As a human organism, you need the weirdos, because if you don't have the weirdos, you won't figure out the weird problems. Yeah, people who think differently like that 
I'm way outside the box. Are, are <laughs> very useful to have around you. Ooh. Like in business or? Yeah, you would think like that, that somebody would want to. Because once you, once you tap into their specialty, it's, it, it can't be matched. Yeah, it's as long as you can get past the. You just got to keep them away from the customer. <laughs> Not always. Not always. always. No, you you're, know, you're very you, personable. Uh, yeah, you go to grocery stores, I think they're packed with autists. One of, one of the things when you're a child that you can see as a sign is a child stacking cans. And I got a job at the grocery store where I got sexually uh, uh, harassed. <laughs> they blamed me. Because I was like, you're an autist, you're an autist. Oh, you know. Not, and they were like, yeah, I am. I, I am. Yeah, I am. And there's this one person I said, have you, and he was saying something, I said, have you ever considered you might have autism? And he got offended. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, that was one that was an offense, man. I'm like, uh, like, are you part of the clan? Because you are, dude. <laughs> you know, and he, he's like, oh, you're coming. Because he probably knew somebody that had autism was like biting their sister or something. Yeah, you just found out a couple years ago? A few years Me? ago? Me? Yeah. Four years ago. Four years ago. Four so years you, ago. You went your whole life not knowing you were autistic. Yeah, and my sister, she did ABA therapy. Uh, I think that's what it's called. So she taught autistic kids or um, applied behavioral analysis. Um, she taught autistic kids for like 20 years. I did a painting demonstration for them one day, you know? And uh, they were okay, they were just like, but anytime my sister would get angry at me, she'd be like, you remind me of my kids. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I saw your kids, like half of them don't talk. And like, when you tell me about your kids, it's just negative stuff. Like, uh, and then whenever I, I watched this YouTube video, it was, a, okay, my ex-wife from Santa Cruz, uh, or San, San Francisco, um, She's an accountant there for the college. She has autism, severe personality disorder. She was molested by her mother or her father, and then gang raped on LSD. And, and yeah, it was. <laughs> um, so yeah, all the all the all the all the uh, ICPTSDers, they have the trauma. Oh, I, I lost everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've lost. That's why. That's why I had the pen. I was like, oh, man. Mm. Yeah, your conversation with you tends to go all over the road. Yeah. <laughs> well, Patrick, um, thank you for enlightening us a little bit about autists. Yeah, sure. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad you drove out here safely. You're gonna leave. I'll stay if you're if you're gonna do more interviews with me. I'll stay. I'll I'll get a shitty hotel for okay. one more night. What one is fun? What's that? What, one is one fun? one's good. Okay, one's yeah, good. yeah. I'm gone. I'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> Heading back to Pittsburgh. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. That was interesting. Cool.